It's, uh, it's great to see such a crowd. Uh, I do see that people basically prefer kind of political discussion to any kind of uh, other time spent in a good time and uh, a kind of compliment to, uh, to the foundation. Now I have to read uh, a sort of appreciation for Stefan saying that basically if the engagement is there. Uh, let, me, let me map out a couple of points and after that simply have a good Q&A session. The first one. What the Russia have been doing for many years in Georgia here, in Ukraine, in Moldova, is the idea not to fix conflict, but to create conflict and to get it running. Because it's a kind of low-cost exercise, and the idea, both under Yeltsin, actually, remember Transnistria, but especially under Putin, to keep everybody away of its own uh, choice. Just choice, because for us, for Ukrainians, it's about choice, for you, it's about choice. For Moldovan, it's about joins. For Belarusians, let's talk about Lukashenko later. But okay, at least for for our free countries, forget about it. It's over. This strategy of Russia is over. If you ask me, what the Russia, what Russia basically now is getting at, is a completely different scenario. This scenario is a sort of reshuffle of the whole reality around Russia and the idea to recreate not the Russian Empire, they are too smart for that, and not the Soviet Union, although they miss the Soviet Union, but a new reincarnation of the Eurasian Union. And my point, Putin now I'll tell you why a bit later, was actually to swallow the whole Georgia into the Eurasian Union. For Ukraine, it's not possible anymore. Western Ukraine and Central Ukraine, if you ask me, is out of this equation. So what Putin uh, is basically trying to do now, and basically uh, the point to your question, is to break Ukraine into different realities. One reality is to have occupied Donbas, and after that, very good point from you. Passportization, Russian uh, reality, Ruski, Mir, you know. And the, the idea is to expand the current occupied Donbas to, to the whole Donbas. And basically, this decision uh, a couple of days ago of the so-called Donetsk authorities to set up border, just imagine border for so-called Donetsk uh, People Republic for the whole Donetsk Oblast is exactly this idea. Putin's decree to issue passports to all citizens of Donbas is exactly the same idea. But it's just the beginning. The next point would be to break the east of Ukraine, but especially the south of Ukraine, and i tell you why. The south is about Russian control all of the Black Sea, the real control, not just Crimea. Second, getting through land corridors both to Crimea, but especially to Transnistria and Moldova, and to include Moldova into the Eurasian Union fully. But remember another point. If you see the approval rating of the Russian leadership now, you know, I don't trust any agency now in Moscow, even Levada, but even Levada told us a couple of days ago that the Putin approval ratings is back to 2011, basically even before the Bolotna Square. The Crimean, Crimean effect, the effect of the Crimean occupation is gone, zero. 
And for Putin, to swallow Belarus, Belarus is, uh, for many Russians, perceptionally, is, uh, is a part of Russia, and circumvent sanctions through Belarus is a good, is a good point. But to create another Novorossia, new Russia, to the south and east would mobilize the Russians, saying it's another big win we have we've been getting mm, again. So, and of course to have uh, the western Ukraine, uh, if possible to swallow central Ukraine, as a kind of buffer. So my point, Putin is not ready and not willing anymore to have even the whole Ukraine, even without occupied territories, as a buffer state. So, the second point on Normandy. I don't expect something really critical on Normandy. Probably exchange of uh, political prisoners and, uh, you know, Putin uh, never ever does something just like that. It's about creating a sort of emotional stroll, emotional whirlwind to push Zelensky to deliver something because after a kind of a couple of good results, the pressure to deliver is there. Maybe to have something on ceasefire or disengagement of forces uh, in the sense of tactical positions is very, it's very difficult for us. Because disengagement is uh, far, far, far more benefiting actually Russian uh, Russian forces. So fundamentally, either it's a whole way forward, and it would be seen and perceived in Ukraine as a total capitulation, and it's one Putin strategy to push all this. Putin doesn't like Zelensky. Putin did not want Zelensky to win, actually. Zelensky is even dangerous for Putin, because if Zelensky is able to win in Ukraine, why someone else is not able to win in Russia in the future? Somehow, and why Putin's model is the best one? You know, just uh, have a look on the last election result in the Russian regions, uh, you know. It's all kind of turning down the ruling party. So, is Putin interest in the success of Zelensky? No way. It's my second point. So, I don't expect something, something real from this meeting. Third point. Why Putin is, I believe, strengthened in his uh, commitment to uh, create a new reality around uh, the Eurasian Union, here in Georgia, in Ukraine, in Moldova, and of course, Belarus. Because uh, he believes momentum, international momentum is there. We have Macron, who does not love Putin, but believe uh, because of Africa and Middle East and uh, tackling terrorism, uh, he needs a kind of special partnership with Putin. Germany, difficult. But I'm actually very optimistic uh, for Germany. We can discuss it further. Yeah? Uh, U.S., uh, you know, we like Trump in a special way, uh, especially now with the impeachment inquiry started. Uh, you know, I, I probably gave uh, 2,000 of interviews to U.S. media, and now again coming on uh, on my phone. It's it's, uh, it's like crazy. But Putin is extremely happy on Georgia and Ukraine, and I'll tell you why. Because Georgia now is out of the international radar. If you read international media, where is Georgia? Where is Georgia, basically? You, know, you, have, you have your guys fighting in Afghanistan, they are heroes, of course, and it's important for your international tenure, but what else? And in Ukraine now, Ukraine is perceived and, and uh, you know, understood by many Americans in what way? Five years after the Maidan, when everybody had, uh, had Ukraine on, uh, on the screen, it's now again Ukraine. Ukraine, uh -huh. the source of all trouble, the source of shadow economy, now source of shadow politics with Giuliani. You know, people simply opening up bottle of champagne here in the Kremlin. So, uh, the, the international situation is, is quite difficult, both for us and, and for Georgia. 
Uh, my my fourth point. So just five points. Nothing else. Uh, don't worry. My fourth point. I I like your point about CBM. I like your point about humanitarian engagement. Of course, we uh, we simply must do it because it's about our people. It's about our citizens, and, and we are we are human. We are we are we are just humans. But don't believe that it could lead you to a kind of success in the sense of changing status. Because uh, on the other side, you have good people on your side, really. But on the other side, you have Facebook. And actually, in all kind of realizing these projects, you have Facebook. You can engage people there. You can help your people and your health, uh, education, humanitarian projects. Basically, you have to care about them. It's your people. But don't believe that you can have any success in the sense of getting this back because of humanitarian projects. Simply forget about it. It's, it should be as crystal clear for, for everybody in the sense. And, uh, you know, my, my, my very simple point, uh, what next? I believe that there is now a kind of danger our 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 regions uh, to get split in what way now it's a kind of uh, you know not tendency okay but uh, a sort of temptation to see our region like ukraine moldova belarus and south caucasus it's different not in the sense of uh, what we we want to do what we what we are striving in the sense of our commitments, but simply to split us geographically. And here we need uh, we need a kind of different uh, different interaction. We need uh, simply to get back with a very clear idea how we can defend ourselves. Because one lesson I I actually I've learned in all these five difficult years, nobody would help you if you are not ready to defend your, your, yourself. It, either you try, and after that, somebody will have to, to help you. As soon as we are together, probably with someone else, we can do more. Otherwise, the Russians would use all these weak points, and they're actually very good in using don't expect, you know, the Russian tanks to come to Tbilisi or to Odessa. They are not, uh, they are not so stupid. But they try to come up with any sort of hybrid, you know, stirring up troubles, uh, saying, aha, capitulation here for Zelensky, or, you know, pushing uh, Donbass back uh, as a sort of protectorate and touring horse. It's all about, uh, they believe they have, uh, they have time, but they don't. And uh, look, uh, okay, wrap it up. Uh, I believe we we can't uh, we can't have the same uh, the same approach like before. One of my great friends here, I started my day with a good coffee with a couple of friends, and he told me, "Look, Pablo, you know, there is a say here in Georgia that after the Georgian war, Russia learned a lot. Georgia learned something." And the West basically has learned pretty much nothing. Uh, well, it's up to you to decide. Uh, I believe it's close to the truth. In the case of Ukraine, I believe Russia again learned a lot. Ukraine, I would say, uh, learned quite a lot. But we see where we're gonna see whether uh, whether it would work. But the West again. Probably also learn something, but not able to, uh, to to do something. So the point is to push the West uh, and to explain uh, the West that what's going on here in Georgia and in Ukraine is not our problem. And of course it's our problem because it's our survival. But it's also existential problem for the West. And now it's getting better in Germany. It's not getting better in Paris. It's somehow completely different agenda in the US. And my point, we need together to explain back to the West that for them, 
it also matters. For them, it's also existential. Otherwise, the Russians would be able simply to screw up uh, the, whole, uh, the whole Western reality. And Putin now feels uh, quite strengthened here. Uh, I'm a physicist by education. And many years ago, when I was a uh, you know, smart young student, uh, hopefully, uh, my professor uh, told me a famous joke about Einstein, who had a kind of exam on physics in, uh, in the Zurich University and distributed different tests uh, among the students. And one student raised uh, his, hand, his hand, you know, wavering and said, but professor, these are the same tests you gave us uh, two years ago. And Einstein said, fine, but the answers are different. I believe the answers are different. We can play with the same reality and we can be successful. So let's come up with something which would blow off uh, the sort of uh, narrative uh, we, uh, we've been having now. And it's a point to our survival, but let's discuss it over Q&A session. And thanks again for, for, uh, for, for this good invitation. I believe it's really important to make, uh, make a point about kind of completely different kind, uh, sense of coordination between us. For us, it's now existential, and we need to explain together to everybody else it's existential for the West. Thanks. Thank you very much.